Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to do an art journal page and we are going to do the stained glass effect using stencils. You're going to want to see this. So I am starting with a page that I am giving a coat of black gesso to. And this is key for this effect. Now I'm using black gesso, you can use black acrylic paint, and I'm just covering up a page that went wrong. But you can start with a fresh page. This stencil is called Texture Wall, and it's a new one with Crafters Workshop for summer 2022. And I am taping it down. This is so it stays in place for the entire process. And it's a bit of a long one, but it's really quite easy. Now, looking at the stencil right now, everything that is white, that's stencil material, I want to be black in the end, which is why I gave it a coat of black gesso. Those black lines are going to represent the solder of my stained glass. So the stencil parts that are white are going to be black on my page. And the other parts are going to represent the glass, the colored glass. So I've placed some white gesso on my palette and I'm going to apply it with a makeup sponge. And you see me patting it off and then applying it through the stencil. So the parts that are going to be now covered in white gesso will eventually have the color. Now if I put the color straight on the black, the colors would not be bright or bold. They would be very muted and you would get a very different effect. Try it. You might like that effect and use that on some pages. So I'm patting off all the time. I don't want it, my makeup sponge to get overly wet. The other thing that I don't want to do is press right down on my makeup sponge to get all the liquid out because that might have it go under the stencil. Now if you look at where I've applied gesso, some places are more white or opaque and some places you can still see some of the black coming through. Now if I just put color on this as it is right now, wherever there it's grayish would be more muted colors and that might give you some variation. I want to really make sure that the colors that I use are going to be very bright so I want to make sure that this is fairly opaque. So once it's partially dry, I'm coming back and I'm giving it another coat with the makeup sponge. Don't rush this process. Take your time. This is sped up somewhat. Do a great job. Now, just a word about whenever I've used gesso on my stencil, I do make sure I wash it when I'm done with that stencil. Because gesso tends to stick, adhere, that's its job, to whatever you put it on more than acrylic paint. And it will be a challenge to take it off if you let it draw, sit overnight or for several days. Whereas with acrylic paint, I'm not so worried. Even days, months later, I can get the acrylic paint off. But the gesso, Take care of your stencils and clean it off anytime you use gesso through a stencil. If you don't have gesso, you can use white acrylic paint here. So once I've got two layers, sometimes three layers of this, I am letting it dry. I am not going to use the heat tool because I've got my stencil on there. I don't want to melt my stencil. So I've let it dry. Now I'm getting out my colors. So I have a lizard and crimson, orange, bright yellow, bright green, ultramarine blue, and deep violet. And then I'm just playing with the order here. I think I'm going to start with orange and then end with orange with the six colors. And I'm going to blend in between the colors. So I've grabbed a makeup sponge, a different makeup sponge for each color. 
I'm patting off just the same way I you saw me with the gesso and I'm trying to keep a wet edge so I can blend the colors where they butt up against each other and I'm selective in how I'm the order I'm putting them because to colors that I know are going to not give me mud yellow and orange are going to give me a medium yellow and orange in between when I blend them yellow and green are going to give me a, a lime green but I wouldn't want to put blue next to the orange because that's going to give me brown if they're across the, each other from the color on the color wheel typically they're going to mix and they're going to make give you a brownish color which you might not like so when in doubt, mix them on the side, see what happens. If you like the color, go ahead and blend them next to each other. If not, just avoid that. Now I've left the stencil on here for the entire process. And while this takes some time, it still is a very effective well worth it technique to use. So again, everywhere that the stencil material is will be black when I lift this up. It is going to represent the solder of my stained glass. And everywhere I'm putting color now is going to represent the glass part of the stained glass in the very vibrant colors. Now, if I had put a white sheet underneath this and just stenciled the colors on, when I lifted it up, I would have all the white lines. And you can then go with a fine line brush, paint all those white parts where the stencil was black, but that's an extremely tedious process and doing it the way I'm showing is way easier. Sometimes I'm coming back and I'm adding another layer of color just to get the vibrancy that I want. Now again, this stencil is new and it, I don't know, it's like the designer got in my head and said, what would Karen like? This stencil is all sort of things that I love. It's called Texture Wall and I love the kind of waves the different motifs that I can use and I can guarantee that you will love this stencil. This is a good one to have. Lots of usability. The wide open spaces would make it perfect for stamping through the stencil. Now the colors that I'm using, I'm kind of doing the rainbow of colors and I'm blending them together. Every time you do this, if you, you apply different colors, you're going to get a different effect. So have fun with it. I could have put the colors on from left to right instead of top, bottom to top. I like starting and finishing with the same color. I just find that pleasing to the eye. So when I'm happy with the vibrancy of the colors, I can reveal my stained glass. Now if you wanted the solder to be copper, you would put a layer of copper colored paint underneath so you can play around with the color of the solder i could have done dark blue i could have done gold i think that would look nice but i went with the black because i wanted that high contrast now my makeup sponges i have a container with water and i put a dishwashing tablet in there and those soak and then I clean them out the, the paint comes out and there we have it don't uh, oh, I just love 
how this looks. Now I'm really going to go and wash my stencil and I'm going to give this a good dry. So now let's talk about focal images. Because the color background is so colorful, I could put a couple dragonflies on here. I like the swoop of the curl. This is a free printable and it looks like it's she's sitting on here, this little fairy. There's a larger one. I like the black and white. It's the focal images are standing out against the background. When you got those bright colors, you don't need much in your focal image. And I have this zebra napkin from ninniesnapkins.com. She also carries the TCW stencils. Now I've rough cut a couple of these zebras out. These have been sitting on my desk for a while. I've been wanting to use them. And while all the options I showed you would work, I'm going to go with the zebra one. Now I grabbed a piece of scrap paper and I'm going to take off the excess plies off the napkin and glue them down onto the copy paper. And I'm doing this because I'm going to glue them onto that colorful background and I don't want to see that color coming through and the marks coming through the zebra. I want to keep the zebra looking like a zebra. So I'm giving it a white background. And this is just fluid matte medium. And I'm gluing it down with a brush. Nitty's Napkins also carries a lot of the TCW stencils. As well as loads of art journaling mixed media supplies so there's a link in this box below there's also a tcw shopify link down below if you're looking for the tcw stencils oh i just love that background so simple and yet so, so effective. So once that's all done, I'm giving it a good dry and then I am going to cut it out. Now, if there was just white right next to the zebra, I could have left it because it will go translucent when I apply the matte medium to glue it down onto the page but because there was writing right up into it I wanted to get rid of anything that wasn't zebra I think this stencil would make a gorgeous background even this effect on a card and then just put the sentiment on it how simple Now you can see that there's little bits of white that show through. Now you could white that out or could color that again, but I like it. it, gives me highlights. And I found a sentiment saying there's so much more between black and white. So I went and I played with my word program and typed it out. with a mixed font and I used a font that was going to be fairly bold. And now I'm going to cut this out and play with where I want the sentiment to go. And I went a little bit too big with the sentiment. I wanted it so bold. I would have been better if I had made it a little bit smaller, but I was too lazy to go back and print it out again and I, I'm just going to make this work. Might have to play with it. Now around the black and white word uh, and script, I'm giving it a bubble cut and I'm leaving a fair bit of white on it. And I'm doing that deliberately for this page because the background is so colorful. And I want this, I want these words black and white to really pop. So again, if you're looking at the 
background. You can see where the white is. That's like highlighting. And we didn't have to do any highlighting because it's already been done by the technique. This background, again, we, I showed you some examples of focal images that would work. You could put flower on here, a uh, black and white flower. You can paint it white. And this is me, as I usually do, playing around with the, the orientation and just looking back and seeing what I like and making what I have work. So I finally decided and I'm going to glue all my elements down. And because the zebras are on paper, they're a little thicker now, I'm going to use my gel medium instead of my fluid medium. This one is from the Crafters Workshop, and I love it. It goes on cloudy but dries clear. Now the substrate that I'm working on is a 7x10 Canson Mixed Media Art Journal. I've taken it off the coil so I can work on it flat. And I tape the top edge where the coils are to keep them clean from any kind of materials and to give me a nice straight edge. So in real time, this took about 40 minutes, beginning to end, including drying time. But if you don't have time, that much time to sit, you can break this down. You can do the background in one session and then do the focal image in another session. So again, I will give this drying time and make sure everything's dry before I come back in. Now I just want to edge my page. We're moving to the finishing part. And for me, that's edging the page. Now whether you use a charcoal pencil, Stabilo all pencil around the edge, or you use the floating acrylic shading technique, which is what I'm doing here with my angle brush, I want to have a border, a of black. That's going to frame my page. Hopefully you can see the difference it makes with that little bit of black around the edge. Now I'm thinking, oh, I could shade some of these and you know what, Karen, leave it as it is. It's super simple. You don't need to do anything. You've got all that variation by applying the colors, by blending them wet on wet. But I am going to shade around the zebras. They are the focal image, and I want them to stand out a little bit more against the background. So I am shading on the zebra with the napkin. Now remember, this has a coat of gel medium on it, and 
that turned it into a non-porous surface so it didn't just soak into the napkin and discolor the whole napkin. And then I'm going on the page right next to the zebra. And with shading, I'll put a, a coat of it, let it dry, then I'll come back and I'll add more as I see fit. But you gotta let it dry in between. And then I'm just adding, making a few things a little bit darker on the zebra. I do go in and I'm shading over top of the stripes just to make them a little bit bolder in an effort to make my focal image stand out a little more. The saying, show me your true colors. Don't be afraid to show your true colors would also have worked on this sentiment. Using my Posca pen to just outline this, give this a little bit more weight. When you outline it or shade around something, it just gives it more weight on the page. Giving that a dry, and I'm going to heat the tape. It's been sitting there for a while, so I'm going to heat it so that I can unstick it without pulling up the paper. A little trick I learned. And I'm looking and I'm thinking, what else does it need? I'm loving the bright, bold colors. The stained glass effect looks great. And I'm going to give it a line of white on there. And because I shade it with the black, the white stands out even the more. But I like the addition of the white there. It ties in with everything that's going on in the page. And I'm giving this a dry so I don't inadvertently rub my wrist against it and smudge. And I'm adding a few white lines in here, just beefing up the highlights that were easily done for me, for us. You could do a lot of doodling on this. I chose not to because I didn't want it to get extra busy. But in another video, I would do another technique like this and I would totally doodle around the elements of this stencil. I think that would look lovely. Right now, I believe I am, I have some white gesso on my, on the, from earlier, and I'm just adding a little bit of water, and I'm going to splatter with white. And there we have it, the finished page. I hope you enjoyed watching me create the stained glass effect. Here is the background before I did anything. There are close-ups of the finished page. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. Click the bell. Make sure you're going to be notified of upcoming videos. 
I'm planning on doing a lot of stencil technique videos in the near future. You're going to want to see those. Until next time, go get creative.